When you picture a steam engine, you likely imagine a machine of the past, something belching out smoke and covered in soot, puffing in an exaggerated manner and requiring a mountain of coal to operate. Often they're associated with the Wild West, or the dining trains of the 1920s, or even evacuee trains in the Second World War, but certainly all symbolising an era long ago. Steam locomotives in the UK were phased out in the 1960s, and many other countries had already switched to diesel. But what if this had never happened? What if the development of steam carried on way into the 21st century? Could it be that the technology had simply peaked, or was there much more potential that never had the chance to flourish? Well, I've asked enough questions, so today I'm going to share with you a concept that answered all of these theories. This is the 5AT project, the modern steam engine that might just have proved what steam power was capable of. Since Trevithick's contraptions first hit the roads in the early 1800s, steam as a means of transportation developed steadily for over 150 years. As we've discussed previously, Stevenson's rocket became the blueprint for the generally accepted structure of a locomotive. With faster and stronger interpretations still conforming to the same basic principles. Taking the UK as an example, the pinnacle of innovations arguably came from Oliver Bullied's post-war machines and Robert Riddle's standard designs. Engines like the Britannias and 9Fs were created to incorporate everything that had been learnt before into locos that were efficient, powerful and easy to maintain they were planned to go on right into the 1980s. But most were sent to scrap only a handful of years after they were built, because the country turned instead to diesel power. Investment into refining the technology was stopped and the age of steam was put out. But what if it really was cut short? Mechanical engineer David Wardale arrived a bit late to the scene, learning with British Railways from 1967, the year before the last mainline steam service. He went instead in 1973 to work for the South African Railways, which like many other countries was still using steam on heavy freight trains. Wardale was convinced that the diesel era was being rushed and that steam still had potential if given the chance. It was certainly stronger than diesel traction at the time, but expensive to run, difficult to maintain, and not as comfortable for the crews. Nevertheless, Wardale undertook rebuilds of several South African engines to improve their performance. The most complex modifications were done to class 19D number 2644, namely with a gas producer combustion system in the firebox and adjustments to the pistons. When rebuilt, it could haul 20 to 30% greater loads, with a 20% fuel reduction, but this was only the beginning. His masterpiece makeover came in the form of class 26 number 3450 which was named after Argentinian engineer Livio Dante Porter, who had developed several of its new features. Originally built in Germany as a Class 25 NC, it had all of the previous changes and then some. 
a Lempore exhaust was fitted to the rebuilt smoke box. The main steam pipe and steam chest enlarged, and the valve gear completely rebuilt to name only a few changes. I am summarizing greatly what was done because this is not the engine you came here to see. And indeed, the feeling was the same for South African railways. This beast was painted all over in buffer beam red, which earned it the nickname the Red Devil. In many ways, the unorthodox rebuild was a success because the engine became stronger, faster and more economical than its previous form. In fact, the overall power output was stated to be increased by 40% and Wardale believed it would have been able to reach 100 miles an hour if given the chance. The chance it was not given and the railway were not impressed with what had been done. Test runs did show successes, but results were inconsistent and crews did not favour the new driving conditions. The increased power meant that the engine was prone to slipping and priming, not helped by the fact it was required to run it with a fully open regulator. The Red Devil soon had much of its new fittings removed, and the process to eliminate steam for diesel continued. Wardale continued his work in the USA and in China, where rebuilds for industrial steam and exports were still taking place, until they too gave way to more modern propulsion. Time is a gift for dreamers. And in 1998, David Wardale published a book about the Red Devil and other tales from the Age of Steam. At the end, and in an article named Wither Steam Now, he put forward the concept of a locomotive built entirely from scratch. Tornado and many other examples have now proved that an existing design can be revived in brand new metal. But there has not yet been a new built mainline engine developed from an entirely original plan. The wheels of the 5AT project began rolling. The letters standing for advanced technology. The general concept was to pick up from where the development of steam traction had left off. And so the British Railway's Standard 5 class was used as a basis. These mixed traffic machines were built with the best elements from similar pre-grouping engines. and consultations on the design from loco crews made them efficient and easy to maintain. Their general shape was used for the outline, though streamlined and fitted with a massive new tender. Two cylinders connected to Valshart's outside valve gear, all easily accessible below the running plate for maintenance. The box pox style wheels were lightweight and had an even axle loading of 20 tons each. To prevent slipping, sanders on each wheel were complemented by steam jets to remove the used sand so that the rest of the train didn't drag. Design lessons from previous engineers came into play too such as in the superheating and exhaust systems. Oil firing would be standard, but conversion to coal considered as a possibility. The introduction of new parts complemented the use of old practices. Any machining advancements made after the building of Evening Star would be put to good use the 5AT becoming the world's first third generation steam locomotive.
But what use is a new design when there are so many existing engines that are yet to be restored? The 5AT aimed not only to see how steam could develop further, but to do what current engines in the UK could not. There is a constant pressure for mainline trains to run faster, to keep to time with the parthing allowances. The cost to run these tours means that large passenger numbers need to be carried to break even. Fossil fuels on the rails are an ever-increasing expense, so a loco that is efficient with its fuel consumption helps greatly. Not only that, but the ageing older generation of engines were not built to meet all of the present-day safety requirements, including space to fit signalling equipment such as ETCS. Therefore, the 5AT would have been built with all of these concerns in mind. And the predicted results are impressive to say the least. According to the owning group, the 5AT would have had a tractive effort of 32,688 pounds of force, compared to 26,124 for the standard 5. It would have had a thermal efficiency of 14%, low fuel and water consumption, and extremely little required maintenance. It would have a continuous operating speed of 113 miles an hour, and at top speed was reckoned to be able to reach 125 miles an hour. To put that into context, Mallard's speed record of 1938 was 126 miles an hour. <laughs> Though the Pennsylvania Railroad T1 Trust reckoned that would be a walk in the park for their new build. Either way, the 5AT boasts some high claiming stats, and in fact sounds like the dream engine on paper. But would it have really worked? Well, if anyone was able to pull off these figures, it would be someone who had experience in rebuilding engines to modern practice. Though Wardale's examples perhaps never got the chance to prove their worth. Intricate plans and data were written to show that the 5AT would be a success. No doubt incorporating present day construction techniques would outperform methods from over a half a century ago. So, where is the real thing to prove it? In 2001, the project was formally launched, and these beautiful artistic impressions that you are seeing were painted by Robin Barnes. The group raised awareness for their concept for the next 10 years, with a feasibility study published in 2010. It was estimated to cost around £11 million to make it all happen. Money that simply could not be raised for an engine with only predicted results. 2012 saw the project cancelled, but their efforts were not to go to waste. The group have since been in the background of the existing steam engine scene as consultants. Lessons learned from the Red Devil and research into the 5AT are able to be put forward into the construction of any new build engine. As for the Red Devil itself, the engine is still around in South African preservation, and has now returned to working order at the Cape Town Atlantis Rail Depot. The closure of the last coal-fired power station in the UK in 2024 truly symbolises the struggles that the heritage sector are facing. Prices to import coal or manufacture alternatives are at their highest, and requirements to run on the main line are as strict as ever. Flying Scotsman is currently the oldest operable engine on the big railway at 101, the youngest original locos being Britannia and Oliver Cromwell at 73 years old.
Whilst they are kept in top condition by their owners, they will only ever perform as well as when they were built at very best. New builds like Tornado and Prince of Wales were able to have amendments made to maximise their abilities. But these are still only modifications to 20th century plans. In the 64 years since Evening Star left Swindon Works, we don't know what an engine built after then could achieve. Sadly, unless someone finds 11 million pounds sticking out of an ATM machine that someone forgot, we will continue to be left in wonder. The need for an advanced technology old timer may be present, but the costs and uncertainty to make it happen mean that perhaps it's simply not justified. This is the point where I admit I am not an engineer. I did degrees in the arts, not degrees in the firebox. So I hand over the questions to all of you experts in the comments. Do you think the 5AT project could have been the success that it claimed to be? Or did the evolution of steam end with the infernal internal combustion engine? Let me know your thoughts, because discussions like these are what keeps the thought provoked until those dreams hit the iron road in reality. This guide rail was produced to celebrate Rail 200 in 2025. And there is a whole playlist of similar mini documentaries, with a new episode being released on the first Friday of each month. Subscribe so you see what we talk about next. A special thank you naturally goes to the 5AT project, and artist Robin Barnes, who created the artwork of this mysterious Millennium Machine. Many thanks to my brilliant channel patrons Alex Goodman, GBH Train, D0280 Falcon, Sean Tempest, Random Thomas Fan, Dark White 73, Andrew Dyack, Reese Lee Walter, Ryan RTS, Ewan Pentland, Steam Power 4472, and Firewind 10.